from the 90s, we've had a fair few movies that look to remake, reboot, or even re-establish a franchise that once was before. This, of course, precedes the current requel trend we find ourselves in with the horror genre. Truth is, a lot of these remakes and reboots that were released in this era aren't very good, and that's likely a result of trying too hard to follow in the footsteps of a film that likely didn't need remade to begin with. With that being said, I think it's pretty fair to conclude that horror reboots typically have a bad rep amongst fans of the genre. However, this isn't me writing off every single one out there. You know, for every Wicker Man, you've got the Invisible Man. For every Psycho 1988, you have the Evil Dead. To label all of these things bad just because they tried to emulate something that came before is, in my opinion, a really lazy way to analyse this because some of them are able to really strongly capture the feeling that the originals had. There's even some that release and surpass the predecessors, and with that, we're going to get into the subject of today's video. We're headed to Camp Crystal Lake to talk a little bit about 2009's Friday the 13th. With the franchise starting all the way back in 1980 with a movie that in my personal view hasn't aged all that well, the 2009 reboot of Friday the 13th is the 12th installment of the franchise, yes that annoys me to no end. What was originally conceptualised as an origin story was quickly altered and rather than act as a retelling of the first film, this remake decides to really condense things, becoming a reimagining of the first four movies as opposed to just one. It was directed by Marcus Nispel, who wasn't a stranger to horror remakes at the time either, having taken the director's seat with 2003's remake of The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is another genre staple. In my eyes, this movie is one of them that beats that whole horror remake bad ideology. It's not this flawless horror masterpiece, but what it is is a brutal deconstruction of the slasher genre and a film that showcases its strength in a relentless fashion. Spoilers, of course, if you haven't seen the movie, we will be talking story, so just bear that in mind when deciding if you want to continue. Also, before we go any further, just a quick reminder that if you do enjoy this video, feel free to show that by leaving a like and subscribing if you haven't. I do really appreciate it. The movie opens with this brief scene in which we see a young Jason watching from the bushes as his mother is killed by a camp counsellor in self-defence when they try to escape her murder spree, which, you know, fair. This immediately is a change from the original movie, because if you've seen it, you'll know that Jason doesn't actually make an appearance until some weird jump scare ending where he leaps out of the water to grab Alice and pull her under. This movie also immediately puts itself into the good books by reasonably explaining how Jason's like 6 foot 5 and built like a tank next time we see him, because it sets its events 30 years after this little opening scene. That was one thing that always bothered me about the original movies. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of fun to be had there, but you gotta throw logic right out the window before you even start those things. 30 years later, we meet a group of friends as they arrive at Crystal Lake for a camping trip. Spoiler alert, don't get too attached to most of these guys, with the exception being Whitney, someone who is established to share some sort of resemblance to Pamela Voorhees, mother of Jason Voorhees. This cold open lasts a whole 23 minutes, and honestly could act as a short horror film in itself. Literally in just this short time, we're immediately shown what sort of Jason this film has in store, and personally, this might just be my favourite representation of him. He's characterised as this mammoth of a man, this freak of nature, much like the original, with the big difference and honestly the most undeniable factor behind my love for this iteration of the character is the fact that this dude doesn't just walk after you, he charges. It's just an extra layer to an already terrifying character and one that adds a whole other level of urgency to the stuff that happens here. This opening features some great kills and we're eventually treated to the movie's title, letting us know that we can start to kinda care about the people we're seeing on screen now. We meet our new group of characters with the main one immediately showing he's either in for an insane amount of development or he's not the main character of this film. The latter ends up being true here and the real lead is played by Jared Padalecki who you may know from Supernatural. Jared plays Clay, the brother of Whitney from the movie's opening and he ends up in the area knowing that this was one of the last places his sister was seen before going missing. I think the casting of this movie is another really strong aspect of it, you know, not even just with Derek Mears who plays Jason. I'm talking with the likes of Danielle Panabaker who plays Jenna and then even Travis Van Winkle who plays the asshole ringleader of the group that arrives. They all do a really great job of fitting into their role and there's not a whole lot of space to imagine places they could have improved. Everyone does a fairly solid job, even selling the less than quality dialogue. You got perfect nipple placement, baby. Okay. Clay eventually ends up crossing paths with the group and immediately butts heads with Trent, who doesn't really take all that kindly to strangers just waltzing into his cabin, which, you know what, I'm actually gonna give him that one, but what the fuck? Anyway, one by one retreat to more kills as Jason makes his way through the group in a typical slasher fashion, killing two of them while they're wakeboarding. 
Clay being joined by Jenna searches the old campgrounds of Crystal Lake, coming across Jason as they see him hauling a body into an abandoned building. Even in this scene alone, this film is able to give Jason this really threatening demeanour that the earlier movies just couldn't capture. The fact that we've seen how rough and relentless this iteration can be just prevents the audience from ever settling on the idea that these characters are safe, even though they've been established as mainstays. There's a scene sometime prior to this moment where we see Jason find the now iconic hockey mask. There's nothing insanely special about this one honestly, but I do really like the reveal of the mask hidden under the mess and then this shot of Jason checking his fit in the mirror. Until now, Jason has worn a sack on his head, reminiscent of his early appearances in the franchise, having not found his hockey mask until part 3's third act. It's really cool that the movie shows us each of Jason's three definitive eras, with Kid Jason, Sack Boy and then the ever iconic look that we're all familiar with and imagine when thinking of the character. After escaping narrowly, Jenna and Clay run back to Trent's cabin to warn the others about Jason, however he's quick to arrive, shutting off the electricity because if there's one thing we can say about Jason, it's that he's been in a few horror movies now and the dude knows how the third act works. He kills both Chewie and Lawrence one by one as they leave the cabin and after sneaking inside kills Bree. Clay and Jenna, now accompanied by Brent, run from the cabin but he doesn't exactly last much longer either, getting what is honestly one of my favourite kills in this franchise for just how goofy the whole thing is. Jason literally impales him on this tow truck and then watches as he's driven away. It's, it's great. After making sure Trent has a safe trip, Jason returns to his hunt. Chasing Jenna and Clay back to the campgrounds where the two have discovered his little man cave where he's keeping a woman captive? That woman just so happens to be Whitney who, if you remember, is Clay's sister who shared a resemblance to Jason's mother, hence his reasoning for keeping her around. Jason comes back and when he finds out that Whitney brought friends over, he is pissed, hunting them down within the narrow confined corridor of the little lair, eventually killing Jenna before she can escape which I almost actually kind of feel sad about. He doesn't feel sad though, evidenced by the fact that he still keeps charging after Clay and Whitney and after cornering them is actually about to kill Clay before he's confused by Whitney who pretends to be his mother in a scene very reminiscent of part 2's finale which is almost definitely what they were trying to go for here. This works however and they end up gaining the upper hand with Whitney getting close enough to stab him through the chest with his own machete. The whole end to Jason's reign of bloodshed in this movie is epic and most importantly earned. With a chain wrapped around his neck, he's drawn further and further towards some sort of crushing mechanism before his head is caught in it and we get this awesome moment as his terror trail finally ends, as the struggle ceases and we reach the film's ending with Clay and Whitney dumping his corpse into the lake. And what I guess is a way to try and let his spirit rest or maybe just dispose of evidence, I don't know exactly. We have this small moment of peace to end the movie on as the two siblings are now reunited but then surprise motherfucker, Jason's not dead. Yeah, I saw, I saw this coming. With all of the lore mixing that they'd done from the previous films for this one, I assumed they were going to hint at some sort of supernatural element with Jason that was taken from the later movies, and I think this was their way of doing that, because let's be real, no one lives through what they did to that guy's skull. I think this ending does have a bit of an awkward feel to it though, with plans for a sequel being scrapped, this ultimately is the last time we're going to see this iteration of Jason. I do wonder if this would have been how it ended if everyone involved knew there wouldn't be any chance of a sequel from the beginning. I do genuinely believe this film rocks, it's got a great cast, some great kills and it manages to actually serve as not only an extension of the IP but also works at just being a fun time. I have a lot of time and admiration for movies that are aware of their limitations and decide to push past that through creative means. This thing knows that the original movie isn't actually the strongest of things but the people involved also clearly knew the potential in remaking contents from part 2 through 4 and it's clear that they jumped on that. In a weird way that makes me believe there was at least an idea that this may have been the only film in this continuity from the beginning, because like I've mentioned it adapts bits and pieces from the first four movies of the franchise. There's no saying that a future movie wouldn't have mixed and matched different scenes from the same movies, I just think it's something worth considering, because you know this is a, a version of this universe that I was invested in and I do kinda wish I'd been able to see how it would have played out if they had a second film. I won't lie, I do also think the Jason rework is a major reason why this movie continues to stand out as a great slasher remake. The decision to restructure and design him as this leaner, quick hunter gives just this layer of menace and brutality that, you know, it's not lacking by any means in the original movies, but it's certainly nowhere near as present. I do concede, however, that to contrast what we gain, there's an element of tension that's altered slightly. Jason of old was inevitable in the sense that he would move slowly, but he'd still keep moving. This newer Jason creates tension in a different way, through the clear intelligence he adds while hunting his prey, as well as the sudden way he'll charge at them. I suppose in a weird way, enjoyment of this movie could literally just come down to... How'd you take your slasher killers? I do really like the effort that went into him though. To Derek Mears, the actor portraying him in this outing, 
Jason is pretty similar to a character like Rambo, calculating his attacks because he feels as though he's being wronged, merely fighting back in self-defense. Mears believes Jason's supposed to be more sympathetic in the film, but that's not the same opinion shared by others who worked on it, with some of them recognising from previous outings that it would be a good idea not to make the savage killer a sympathetic villain. In fact, one of the big reasons early on that the idea of this being an origin story was scrapped was because they didn't want to highlight any focus on Jason's childhood and the torment he faced. To them, Jason is a killing machine, plain and simple. I appreciate that this thing is able to feel like a Friday the 13th movie, and I think that is a very, very crucial aspect of any horror remake. One thing I feel with some of them, you know, Rob Zombie's Halloween coming to mind, is that they share a name and yet they don't invoke any of the same feeling that makes them feel as though they belong in this IP. Friday is able to go around this issue with a number of ways. For example, it's layered in homages and easter eggs to the hardcore fans to spot, like a wheelchair in Jason's lair, which is a reference to Marp from Friday the 13th Part 2. It also features several of the musical cues from Harry Manfredini's score in the previous films, purely because the producers recognised that it was an iconic part of the mythos and something that helped create those movies and make them feel like Friday the 13th movies. Unfortunately, it probably doesn't surprise you to note this thing opened to pretty negative reviews from critics across the board. To them, this didn't add anything to the franchise, which, you know, sure, I guess is a fair point, I can't really fault that when I've stood here and spoke about the elements of previous films that it utilises, but what I do want to say is I question whether or not that's a good reason to write off the movie or not, and in my personal opinion, it's not. You may disagree, and you're allowed to, but I don't necessarily see the harm in a Friday the 13th reboot doing Friday the 13th things. We didn't blast 2018's Halloween for this reason, and yes, I do prefer that movie, but the conversation's still there. Why is the failing point for one movie not a hindrance on the other? Critically, this thing did suck. I don't really like paying attention to that, though I much prefer the idea of seeing something yourself and being your own opinion on the matter. But the reality is, it just didn't start off well. Um, that didn't stop it from strolling away, however, at the box office with 92.7 million. It ended up becoming the second biggest grossing film in the franchise, only behind Freddy vs Jason, which I'm convinced only is the top because of the crossover, because if you've seen that movie, you know it's not very good. Overall, this thing has both its merits and its faults. 2009's Friday the 13th ultimately now feels more like a what if in this franchise, a glimpse into what could have been a new direction for this killer and one that I personally would have welcomed. I've seen a little love for this movie, but in general I do think it goes widely ignored by most, and that sucks. It's definitely not a bad movie, and if you're looking at maybe dipping your toes into the slasher genre and want to see more of the icons without sitting through all of the crap that comes with the original timeline, then this might not be the worst place to start. This movie is underappreciated, I will stand by that, and even if I'm the only person singing its praises, I'll live with it, because it's not an opinion that's likely to change anytime. This is the rare example of a remake in this genre done right. You know, other ones that come to mind are Evil Dead. There are others. <laughs> but if all of them were at least half as reinventive and as good as this one can be at times, I do genuinely think we'd be looking back at this age of horror with a lot more positivity. And hey, even if you don't love this movie, at least it's not this abomination, right? I mean... Come on Friday fans, we're winning something. So that is Friday the 13th, a reboot to re-establish and reinvent a horror icon for the modern age. Unfortunately that has been the only time Jason's appeared on screen since, however you can catch him in really great fan projects like Never Hike Alone. Feel free to let me know your thoughts and opinions on the Friday the 13th reboot in the comments below. Also like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and until next time, I've been Media13 and I hope you're all having a fantastic day.